do witches exist? The answer might surprise you. Witches, as commonly portrayed in popular culture, think cauldrons, black cats and flying broomsticks, do not exist. These images are more a product of imagination and cultural stereotypes than any objective reality. Historical evidence provides a complex picture. During the European witch hunts from the 14th to 18th centuries, tens of thousands of people, mostly women, were executed after being accused of witchcraft. But here's the kicker. The vast majority of these individuals did not identify as witches or practice any form of witchcraft. Instead, they were often victims of interpersonal conflicts, social tensions and widespread hysteria. These records show a widespread belief in witches. However, they don't prove the existence of actual magical practitioners. Court records describe accusations of malevolent magic and devil worship. Many confessions were obtained under torture, casting doubt on their reliability. Historians now view these trials as social control rather than evidence of real witchcraft. Archaeological finds suggest magical practices, but could be folk traditions. Contemporary accounts are similarly ambiguous. The debate over the reality of witchcraft raged among intellectuals. The historical evidence points more to a belief in witches than their actual existence. Modern Wiccan and pagan traditions, which do involve practices that might be considered witchcraft, draw on older folklore but actually emerged in the 20th century. Today, those who identify as witches are usually part of new religious movements, not secret ancient cults. Let's debunk another major myth. Were witches evil? The short answer is no. The stereotype of the evil witch emerged from Christian beliefs that linked witchcraft with heresy and the devil. Those accused of witchcraft were often scapegoats, marginalised members of society blamed for various misfortunes and social conflicts. The so-called evil acts attributed to witches, like cursing crops or causing illness, were imagined by their accusers, not based on real actions. In some cultures, figures known as witch doctors were believed to use magic to protect people from evil spells. And in modern Wiccan and pagan traditions, witchcraft is often associated with healing, empowerment, and a deep reverence for nature. The stereotype of the evil witch has deep roots in Christian theology. This image emerged during the Middle Ages. It was shaped by the church's efforts to suppress pagan beliefs. The witch became a symbol of heresy and rebellion against God. Early Christian writings portrayed witches as servants of Satan. This idea gained traction in the 13th century. The Inquisition began to view witchcraft as a form of devil worship. This shift marked the beginning of the witch hunts. The Malleus Maleficarum, published in 1487, cemented this view. This influential text described witches as inherently evil. It claimed they made pacts with the devil and caused harm through magic. The book became a manual for witch hunters across Europe. It spread the idea of the evil witch far and wide. This Christian conception of witchcraft had lasting effects. It influenced popular culture and legal systems. The image of the cackling, malevolent witch persists to this day. However, this stereotype bears little resemblance to historical magical practices. It is largely a product of Christian demonology and moral panic. Greek mythology offers a different perspective on witches. These figures were often powerful and complex. Two of the most famous are Circe and Medea. Circe appears in Homer's Odyssey. She is a sorceress on the island of Aea, known for transforming men into animals. Medea is another complex figure, a princess and priestess of Hecate. She helps Jason obtain the Golden Fleece. These witches differ from the Christian stereotype. Their magic is natural, not diabolic. If you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. The concept of witchcraft has evolved significantly over time. Modern Wiccan and pagan traditions emerged in the 20th century. These movements reclaimed the term witch in a positive light. They sought to revive and reimagine ancient pagan practices. Wicca was founded by Gerald Gardner in the 1950s. He claimed to have been initiated into an ancient witch cult. Most scholars now believe Gardner invented much of Wicca himself. However, he drew on various occult and folkloric sources. Wicca combines elements of ceremonial magic, folk traditions and modern spirituality. 
Other pagan traditions also developed alongside Wicca. These include Druidry, Asatru, and various forms of Neo-Shamanism. Like Wicca, they often incorporate ideas about magic and witchcraft, but they reject the Christian association of witchcraft with evil. Modern witchcraft practices emphasize personal spirituality and connection with nature. They often include rituals, spell work, and herbalism. Many practitioners see themselves as healers or wise women. This is a far cry from the evil witches of the witch hunt era. It represents a reclaiming and reimagining of the witch archetype. The European witch hunts were fueled by complex social and religious factors. Religious tensions played a crucial role. The Protestant Reformation created conflict between Catholics and Protestants. Both sides accused each other of witchcraft and heresy. This heightened paranoia about hidden enemies within society. Social upheaval also contributed to the witch hunts. Population growth, urbanization and economic shifts created instability. Witchcraft provided a convenient scapegoat for these problems. The breakdown of traditional community structures exacerbated tensions. This made it easier for accusations to spread. People were more likely to suspect their neighbors of wrongdoing. The witch hunts often targeted marginalized individuals who didn't fit in. Witch hunts could be used to eliminate rivals or consolidate power. Some rulers used accusations of witchcraft to suppress dissent. The hunts became a tool for social control and political maneuvering. Local superstitions played a significant role in fueling the witch hunts. Every region had its own folklore about magic and witchcraft. These beliefs often predated Christianity. They were incorporated into the new concept of diabolical witchcraft. In many areas, people believed in the power of curses and the evil eye. They thought witches could harm crops, livestock and people through magic. Folk remedies and counter magic were used to protect against these perceived threats. This created a climate of fear and suspicion. Belief in familiar spirits was common in some regions. These were thought to be demons in animal form. They supposedly assisted witches in their evil deeds. Accusations often included claims of seeing these familiars. This shows how local beliefs shaped the witch hunt narrative. Weather magic was another widespread superstition. Witches were blamed for storms, droughts and crop failures. This belief was particularly dangerous during times of climatic instability. It led to witch hunts during periods of poor harvests or extreme weather events. The witch hunts had significant economic dimensions. In some areas, they became a profitable industry. Professional witch hunters emerged, charging fees for their services. This created an incentive to find more witches. It prolonged and intensified the hunts in some regions. Property confiscation was another economic factor. Convicted witches often had their assets seized. This wealth was divided among various parties. It could benefit accusers, judges, and local authorities. In some cases, this led to accusations against wealthy individuals. The printing industry also profited from the witch hunts. Pamphlets and books about witchcraft sold well. They spread information and misinformation about witches. This fueled public interest and paranoia. It created a market for witch-related literature. Economic stress could also trigger witch hunts. During times of scarcity, people looked for scapegoats. Witches were blamed for failed crops or dying livestock. This allowed communities to externalize their economic problems. It provided a simple explanation for complex issues. The witch hunts disproportionately targeted women. Estimates suggest that 75 to 85 percent of those accused were female. This gender disparity reflects the misogyny of the early modern period. Women were seen as more susceptible to the devil's influence. The stereotype of the witch was inherently gendered. Witches were often portrayed as old, poor women. They were seen as threats to patriarchal social order. Widows and unmarried women were particularly vulnerable to accusations. They lacked male protection and often lived on society's margins. Midwives and healers were frequent targets of witch hunts. Their knowledge of herbs and natural remedies was viewed with suspicion. The male-dominated medical profession often supported these accusations. It was a way to eliminate competition and assert control over women's bodies. The witch hunts reinforced gender norms of the time. 
They punished women who didn't conform to societal expectations. Outspoken or independent women were more likely to be accused. The hunt served as a form of social control over women's behaviour and roles. Modern witchcraft practices often draw inspiration from historical traditions. However, they typically reject the negative stereotypes of the past. Many contemporary witches see themselves as healers and spiritual practitioners. They emphasize connection with nature and personal empowerment. Herbalism remains a common practice among modern witches. This echoes the folk healing traditions of the past. Many witches study the medicinal and magical properties of plants. They create tinctures, oils and other remedies. This knowledge is now combined with modern scientific understanding. Divination is another area where modern practices reflect historical traditions. Tarot cards, runes and scrying are popular methods. These techniques were also used in the past, though often in secret. Today, they are openly practiced and taught. Ritual magic is a central part of many modern witchcraft traditions. This includes casting spells and performing ceremonies. While the forms may differ, the basic concept is similar to historical magical practices. The intent is to effect change through spiritual or magical means. The figure of the witch continues to captivate popular imagination. This enduring fascination is reflected in literature, film and television. Witches appear in various forms, from villains to heroes. This shows the complexity and adaptability of the witch archetype. The witch often represents female power and rebellion against societal norms. In feminist interpretations, she symbolizes women's struggle for autonomy. The reclaiming of the term witch by some feminists reflects this. It turns a historically negative label into a source of empowerment. The supernatural abilities of witches appeal to our desire for control. In a world of uncertainty, the idea of magical power is alluring. This explains the popularity of witchcraft-themed entertainment and products. It allows people to engage with these ideas in a safe fantasy context. Academic interest in witchcraft history remains strong. Scholars continue to debate the causes and impacts of the witch hunts. This ongoing research provides new insights into our past. It helps us understand the complex social dynamics that led to such widespread persecution. The concept of witchcraft has undergone significant evolution over centuries. From feared practitioners of malevolent magic to symbols of female empowerment, witches have played various roles. This transformation reflects changing social, religious and cultural norms. The legacy of the witch hunts continues to influence modern society. It serves as a cautionary tale about mass hysteria and persecution. The hunts demonstrate how fear and superstition can lead to tragic consequences. They remind us of the importance of critical thinking and tolerance. Modern witchcraft practices represent a reclaiming of this complex history. They seek to honor ancient wisdom while rejecting harmful stereotypes. This new interpretation of witchcraft emphasizes personal growth and connection with nature. It offers an alternative spiritual path for many. The enduring fascination with witches speaks to their symbolic power. They represent both our fears and our desires for empowerment. As we continue to grapple with issues of gender, power and spirituality, the figure of the witch remains relevant. It continues to evolve, reflecting our changing understanding of ourselves and our world. Thank you for watching. Please let me know your thoughts about witches. Do you believe in them? Do you have any interesting experiences to share with the community? Until next time, keep the legends alive.